Your story begins before you even exist, with your mother searching for the perfect spot to lay her eggs. She's a picky architect, spending hours exploring leaves and branches until she finds just the right location, a sturdy leaf about six feet off the ground, sheltered from rain and hidden from predators. This isn't some random choice. Your mom's tiny brain is calculating angles, assessing threats, and planning security like a miniature secret service agent. Once she finds the perfect spot, she starts her construction project. First, she lays down a base layer of silk on the underside of the leaf. Think of it as the foundation of your future home. Then comes the fascinating part. She begins producing eggs one by one, each about the size of a grain of salt. But these aren't just any eggs. They're perfect little spheres, each one containing the potential for another genius spider. As each egg emerges, she carefully arranges them in a precise pattern, like she's playing the world's smallest game of Tetris. Thirty eggs in total, all clustered together in a tidy little package. Next comes the real artistry. Your mother begins spinning multiple layers of silk around the eggs, each layer with its own special purpose. The inner layer is soft and protective, like a silk blanket wrapped around a precious treasure. The middle layer is denser, providing insulation to keep you at the perfect temperature. Not too hot, not too cold, just right for developing baby Porsches. The outer layer is tough and waterproof, protecting you from rain and nosy predators who might fancy an egg breakfast. When she's done, your egg sac looks like a tiny silk purse hanging from the leaf, about the size of a small pea. Unlike most spider moms who treat their eggs like a leave-and-forget storage unit, your mother sticks around. She perches right next to the egg sac, standing guard like a tiny bouncer at an exclusive club. Any ant, wasp, or other predator that thinks about snacking on her eggs quickly learns why Porsches are the top predators in their weight class. After three weeks of floating in embryonic fluid, you start to feel cramped. Time to break out of this joint. You use your egg tooth to slice through your personal protein prison. As you emerge, you're about the size of a pencil dot, a tiny brown speck with eight eyes and eight legs that don't quite work right yet. Your first view of the world is, well, blurry. Your eyes haven't fully developed, but that's okay because you've got eight of them to work with. Four big ones face forward, giving you binocular vision better than most spiders and the other four are spread around your head like security cameras at a convenience store. Not that you can use them properly yet. Mom's still around, which is nice, but don't get too attached. She'll stick around for another week or so, just long enough to make sure you can walk without face planting every two seconds. Within days, the strongest start eating the weakest. It's a sibling buffet and everyone's invited. This isn't just casual cannibalism, it's your first lesson in survival. By week two, you've figured out how to walk without embarrassing yourself, and your eyes are starting to work properly. Good timing, because mom just left for cigarettes, and she's not coming back. Time to start your life as a hunting prodigy. But you're not just any spider. You're a Porsche, the Einstein of the arachnid world. Your brain is smaller than the head of a pin, about 0.5 millimeters wide. But what you can do with it would impress even the smartest scientists. While dogs and human toddlers get praised for showing signs of intelligence, you're quietly solving puzzles that would stump them both. You're basically running a supercomputer in a space smaller than a grain of salt, proving it's not the size of the brain that matters, but what you do with it. Those eight eyes of yours aren't just for show either. Your vision rivals that of a cat, allowing you to spot potential prey from distances that would be like a human seeing a hamburger from a mile away. And when it comes to jumping, you're the Spider-Man of the arthropod world, capable of leaping up to 50 times your body length. That's not just impressive. That's like a human casually jumping over a skyscraper. Your first few hunting attempts are, let's call them learning experiences. You try to sneak up on a fruit fly and end up spooking it because you haven't figured out how to move stealthily yet. It's like trying to be a ninja while wearing tap shoes. But you're learning, watching, processing. Your brain is mapping out the world in ways other spiders can't comprehend. By month one, you've mastered the basics and you're ready for the big leagues, hunting other spiders. That's right, you're not interested in flies or mosquitoes. You're going after the apex predators of the micro world, often taking down spiders three times your size. Each species requires its own carefully crafted strategy, like a tiny assassin with a playbook of specialized techniques. For web building spiders, you develop one set of tricks. For hunting spiders, another. For spiders that specialize in ambush, you create yet another approach. You're like a martial arts master who knows exactly which style to use against each opponent. Scientists hey. watch in amazement as you solve problems that would challenge animals thousands of times your size, coming up with creative solutions that nobody taught you. You figured them out all by yourself. Your first target is a web-building spider three times your size. For any other spider, this would be suicide. But you're different. 
You spend hours studying its web, watching its movements, learning its patterns, a level of strategic planning that scientists would expect from a crow or a chimp, not an arachnid, smaller than a fingernail. Your tiny brain runs through different scenarios like a military strategist. Should you mimic a struggling insect, pretend to be a potential mate, create a distraction on one side of the web while you sneak in from another? You even consider the wind direction and web tension, factors that would be complex for a computer to calculate. Then you do something incredible. You start plucking the web strands in specific patterns, huh? creating vibrations that perfectly mimic either trapped prey or potential mates. Each pluck is precisely calculated, huh? each movement carefully timed. You're not just hunting, you're performing a concert of deception, displaying problem-solving abilities that researchers would normally associate with much larger animals. The web builder comes to investigate, expecting an easy meal. Instead, it finds you, all four millimeters of you, launching yourself with explosive power, up to 50 times your body length in a single jump. You're a tiny eight-legged ninja with springs for legs. Your fangs sink in before it can react. Dinner is served, and you've just confirmed why Porsches are the special forces of the spider world. As you grow, your hunting techniques become more sophisticated. You learn to create different vibration patterns for different species of spiders. It's like being a polyglot in the language of death. Huh? You can mimic male spiders looking for love, trapped insects having a panic attack. By six months, you're in your prime. Your body is now a whopping seven millimeters long. Then comes dating. As a male, you approach female Porsches with all the caution of a bomb disposal huh? expert with shaky hands. Female Porsches are bigger than males and aren't always in the mood for romance. Sometimes they're in the mood for a post-date snack, if you know what I mean. You have to perform an elaborate courtship dance, moving your legs in specific patterns while hoping she sees you as a potential mate rather than a protein shake. The ones who survive their performance and manage to impress yet to contribute to the next generation. The ones who don't? Well, a spider's gotta eat. After mating, and hopefully not being eaten, females find a nice leaf to set up their nursery. Years pass, and you've become a legend in your small corner of the world. Other spiders tell horror stories about you to their spiderlings. Better watch out, or the Porsche will get you. You've outlived most of your siblings. Though, to be fair, you ate some of them. But time catches up with everyone, even tiny spider geniuses. Your once precise movements become a bit shaky. Your legendary problem-solving abilities start to fade. You find yourself taking longer to plan hunts, and sometimes your prey sees through your tricks. In your final moments, as your tiny but brilliant mind grows dim, you still end up like every other spider, as a small brown speck in the great web of life. You settle into a quiet spot in the foliage. As you rest there, perhaps you reflect on your life. The hundreds of hunts, the complex problems solved, the mates charmed, and possibly eaten. You were never the biggest or the strongest, but you were always the smartest spider in the room. The next time someone finds a tiny brown spider studying them with calculating eyes, they might just be looking at one of your descendants, another eight-legged genius ready to prove that sometimes the biggest minds come in the smallest packages. Just don't tell them that. Porsches are smart enough to get cocky.